students, hello. This is the part of the course where everything starts to come together. All of our hard work, we're now going to see a lot of the uses of statistics. Confidence intervals, capturing the unknown. Here's what we set out to do today. This is what we wanted to know. We wanted to know the percent of all students, Fairview High School students, who think that drinking is an important part of the high school experience. We want P, just plain old P, which stands for the population proportion. But we don't have that. We didn't do a census. What we have is just a sample of FHS students and the percent that said yes to that question. That is the P hat. So does P hat equal P? There's basically a 0% chance of that happening. So we have 0% confident, confidence that our sample exactly nailed the true proportion at Fairview High School that would say yes to that question. So why did we bother if we have zero confidence in our results? Well, we bothered because we could go from 0% confidence to 95% confidence by making one little change. And we're not going to, we're going to just, we're going to create an interval that surrounds our P hat. And that'll take us from 0% confidence to 95% confidence. Here's a little visual trying to explain that. Let's say that this green line is the population parameter. In, in our specific case, it is the proportion of students who think drinking is an important part of the college experience. Again, we don't know it, but let's say that that is the value of it on this x-axis. I don't know if that's 20%, if that's 30%, 40%, whatever it is. Now when we take a sample, let's say this is our sample, we miss the green line. See, the goal is to try to hit the green line. That means we came up with the right percentage. Our sample gave us the exact correct percentage of the population. Well, let's say this is our sample. Well, we missed. We overestimated. But if we make an interval using a margin of error, add, add and subtract to both sides, we have now contained what we're looking for. Let's say this is another sample. We missed again. That's our sample statistic. But our interval contained it again. Another sample which missed, but our interval contained the population parameter, the population proportion in this case. Now it's possible, of course, that we could get a sample a little far out of reach, a little unusual, and even our interval will miss. And that's why we're never 100% confident. But like I say, we can be 95% confident, we could be 99% confident if you want, you just have to make the interval wider. So how do, how do we know we're 95% confident? Well check out this little sample here, this dot here, we said the interval missed, and how often would the sample happen? Not very often. Not very often are we going to be this far away. So what we're looking at here is the sampling distribution. This is why we had to learn sampling distribution. Because it teaches us why, how confidence intervals work. So most of our samples are going to be within reach of this green line. Just look at the, the, the height of the curve here. And, and whenever we have a sample within this range, our interval is going to contain the green line. Now, every once in a while, we might get an unusual sample, and our interval will miss the green line, but that's going to be rare, as you can see by the curve. Here's one more example. We missed the green line, but our interval contained. I have the results for you. I tallied the papers. And out of 55 students who you guys surveyed today, and by the way, I did go next door and I interviewed Mr. Plotz's AP Calc class, and 35 said yes, that drinking alcohol is an important part of the college experience out of 55. So our P hat is 64% and our Q hat is 36%, those that said no. 
got to check our conditions none of this stuff works if our conditions are not met unfortunately we're not going to meet all the conditions are we we did not truly do a simple random sample you could argue that the people we sampled were representative of the school especially of the seniors but you could ar also argue that they're not representative it wasn't a random sample which means we really don't know that these students were independent of each other especially because we interviewed entire classrooms which means there could be a certain type of student in a certain type of class do you get it I think we're okay with a 10% condition we have a little more than 550 students so we're okay there and our sample was large enough as you can see with NP hat and NQ hat notice the difference we're not going to unrealistically we're not going to unrealistically assume we know the population proportion anymore remember Brett Heinz had that question uh, now we're gonna go ahead and use what we really have all we have is P hat that's our sample proportion so our NP hat and NQ hat are both above 10 we're looking good there let's run through the mechanics pretty quickly here uh, here's how we're gonna make this interval you that I showed you we're gonna have to calculate the margin of error the z-score of our confidence level times the standard deviation standard deviation is not new except we're using p hat q hat because that's all we have you're going to take p hat q hat divided by n under the square root so that takes care of half of the margin of error what about this z-score though the z-score is based on the level of confidence you pick how confident do you want to be well you probably always want to be as confident as you can but the problem with being 99 percent confident is your interval is going to be pretty wide and it's going to maybe look like it's too wide to the point where you're not learning much about the population but these are the three most common choices for level of confidence if you are if you choose to be 95 percent confident that's the middle 95 percent of the nor under the normal curve that means you have five percent left over in the tails which means in each tail you have two and a half percent so you would use inverse norm and it would give you the z-score that would contain the middle ninety five percent of area and that is one point nine six always use the positive number here so then we're ready to go with our confidence interval take your p hat add and subtract this margin of error which you're going to calculate and that is going to allow us to go from zero percent confidence to ninety five percent confidence or whatever you choose and keep in mind the more confident you get the less precise meaning your interval has to widen pretty wide and you're not very precise so there is a benefit of being a little less confident you have a more precise a more narrow interval so let's do our confidence interval I'm sure you all want to know the answer to this question about Fairview High School so here's our 55 students 35 said yes that gives us 64 percent let's choose 95 percent confidence interval our margin of error here's the formula let's explain a little more about that z-score of the confidence level here's your middle 95 percent that means that we're going to cover the middle 95 percent uh, what's the uh, chance that we fall that we get a sample that's outside of this 95 percent well it's five percent so we're going to use that to find the z-score how wide we're going to go with the z-score use inverse norm of just one of the tails and we get 1.96 use the positive let's calculate that standard deviation we have our 0.64 times our 0.36 these always add up to 1 divided by n under the square root there's our standard deviation let's put it together let's take our z-score 1.96 see right there 1.96 times our standard deviation 0.065 to give us 0.127 so our confidence interval is our 0.64 64 percent said yes to that question add and subtract our 12.7 percent or 0.127 and our final result looks like that exciting isn't it well really what this says is that 
we think, well, let's go to the next page. Here's the two numbers. Here's our interpretations. And, the, and this is very important, class. Let me get rid of that. This is very important that we understand how to interpret our results. Remember, the whole goal of this class is to not only understand statistics, but to be able to explain it to the average person. So, we are C% percent confident. I left that C because it depends on what you choose. That our interval contains the population proportion. Specifically, this is how you would say the answer. This is the result of our uh, little study we did. We are 95% confident that the proportion of Fairview High School students that think drinking is an important part of the college experience is between 51% and 77%. These are the numbers from the previous page. Now, this is a little bit wide, so we're t you know we, we could go down to 90%. And that would shrink this a little bit. Maybe it would bump it up to like 56% to like 72%, uh, something like that, to be a little more precise. But at least we are confident that we have contained what Fairview High School thinks about this question. So if we were wondering if it was the majority or not, well, I think our result shows that the majority of Fairview High School students, especially juniors and seniors, think yes to this question you should be asking what does 95 percent confident actually mean it's hard I mean how do you explain well I'm 95 percent confident in, in life well what does that mean uh, well he, this is what it means statistically using our methods 95 percent of the samples that we would take will produce an interval that contains the actual proportion we're looking for okay that's a mouthful but it, think back to the picture I showed you, the normal curve and the dots and the intervals that we were drawing. This means that most of the time, we are going, when we take a sample using all these methods, we are going to contain the true population proportion. That's pretty powerful. Remember, we can do this for the state of PA or the whole country or larger populations. We can take a small percentage of the population if it's done randomly and if we uh, satisfy our conditions and we can learn about, we can contain what the whole population would think or what the, what the mean would be of a whole population or what the population proportion would be just with a small sample. In very simple terms we could say that doing what we did will work 95 percent of the time and that's a pretty good number we're to be 95 percent confident so there's the results make sure you understand this we'll have a short mini quiz at start of class tomorrow see you tomorrow